in the exchange rate where we agree that borrowing money from a pessimist is a smart investment. They'll never expect it back. <laughs> but Valentine's Day is tomorrow and I'm super horned, I mean happy, <laughs> to announce that this is the 30th anniversary of me celebrating alone. <laughs> Considering how handsome my drag is, it's pretty hard to believe, right? But don't cry for me, Valentina, because me, myself, and I are just fine and we have a full day of activities planned. First, we're getting an early start on the day by waking up at about 4 p.m. <laughs> I'm taking us out to Harlem's finest cuisine, the Red Lobster, <laughs> hashtag Cheddar Bay Biscuits. And after a little dining and conversation, we're gonna get a lift, because I ain't buying no motherfucking Uber, back to my place where we'll fall asleep to a lovely rerun of Chopped season 19. <laughs> Too real. <laughs> We've got a great show for you this week. Trevor Jackson from Grownish is here. Give it up for him, yeah? And in the name of Valentine's Day, I'll be answering our live studio audience's burning questions about love, sex, and everything in between. And here to help me answer your questions is none other than the queen of all beverages, Pam! Yeah. Pam, the glasses! Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Pam, I love the glasses, mwah, mwah. I know, we gotta bring the love, right? Ooh, you hear your sound effect? Oh yes, that's me shaking. Yeah. Well, I've got a drink, obviously, because I'm not gonna let you just start making a drink with that. Absolutely not. Can. Yes, yes, uh, so yes. I'm gonna show everybody a few things that we can do with cocktails for Valentine's Day. Is everyone excited? No, yes? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm so over-commercialized bullshit, but whatever, here we are. Oh, that's why we drink, because we forget about that part. <laughs> um, oh, is this our pre-cocktail cocktail? This is our pre-cocktail cocktail. Stunning. Um, and so in honor of your 30 years of celebrating alone and my 30 years of celebrating alone, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you a few things that we can do. The first one is we're using vodka in two ways today. Okay. So what I did earlier today was I took some vodka and I infused it with strawberries. Ooh. Yep, and add a little honey already to this. And so what that does is it gives you an infusion. So Honey, vodka, and some strawberry. strawberries. That's it. You just need like a few four hours mm -hmm. in a mason jar, shake it up, and then you can have some shots to get the night started. I right? love that. Yeah, so cheers, cheers y'all. Cheers to all of you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Everything's already shady, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spilling. It. I'm so I'm salivating. This is really it's good. So good. And mm. an, well, another reason for strawberries. We all know about aphrodisiacs here. The love food. No, I don't know if I believe in aphrodisiacs. Like they say, what clams or whatever. Oysters. 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 Which clams a are clam, not, a, cl aren't sexy. a clam is just a broke oyster. All right, <laughs> let's just be called a spade a spade. Just, just couldn't cut it. Couldn't turn things into You know, pearls, yeah, that's you know. what I'm saying. Well, strawberries are aphrodisiac. Okay. So we're gonna talk about some foods that get you into the mood. Oysters are those, but like I open in oyster shells in this show. So like, sorry, we're not bringing. Yeah, yeah, let's not do that. But um, another one is chocolate. Chocolate, mm. yeah, yeah. Cho which do you do you do you mix food and sex? Yeah, always. Really? Yeah, of course. I mean, sex is more fun with food involved, so. Yeah. Right? You know. Oh, Red Rose, Red Rose, like, maybe, no, yeah. I got a lot going on, so you add yeah, chocolate, so everything is sticky, it's you a just, little awkward. You just are chocolate. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Um, but I do think that sex can also involve some great drinks to get you into the mood, yes. which is what we're gonna do. So I'm reclaiming the chocolate martini, because I think all of you have been to places that had really bad versions, uh -huh. right? Uh-huh. Yes, and I'm tired of that. Yeah. So we're gonna show you how to make it in four easy steps with really great quality ingredients. Okay. Um, and a way that you can impress uh, your boo thing, whoever it might be out there, or yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you are doing something, yes, in that room, it's, it's yeah. Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. So we have a bunch of great uh, ingredients. We're gonna start with our vodka. Vodka. Just, yes, grab any vodka. Here's okay. your, your... Ramekin? Jigger. Jigger, great. jigger. <laughs> I, thought the, I thought the shaking thing was, the, okay. Oh, that's the shaker, yeah. That's the shake, okay. Mm. It's okay, I've only been here like a few months. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get Pam, we'll the get only it. thing that I retain is water, okay? Yeah. Information, never. Never, it's like a goldfish. It's like, <laughs> like that, you're like the Finding Nemo, the new Dory, Honestly, right? Honestly, though. Oh my God, which in Finding Nemo 3, they should cast me. Anyway, yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, the Monet that. fish. Yeah, the Monet fish. <laughs> 
I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> so we're going to do an ounce and a half of vodka because we want this to be nice and potent, right? Because we're yes, please. We need to get into uh -huh. into the space. Um, so. Really great uh, chocolate martinis don't just have like chocolate syrup in it. They should have a great ingredient called creme de cacao. Creme de cacao. Mm -hmm. And this is a really beautiful one from an amazing company called Tepes Fugit. I, I always splurge on really good creme de cacao because there's a huge difference mm -hmm. between the good and the bad. I think we all know that when yeah. we all watch people on red carpets and everything, right? Oh, girl. What do you, uh, we saw the Critics' <laughs> Choice Awards! <laughs> <laughs> I saw the good and the bad. Um, so we're going to do an ounce of that. So we're gonna oh, the other side. Uh -huh. And we're going to add a whole ounce. And the fun thing about this chocolate martini is that we're adding only booze into this. So. Ooh. Yes. Oh, girl. We got a lot of tea to spill later, so, you know. We oh, gotta, yeah, we do. We got to get that. And I just add this. To the, add it in there. OK. And that's going to have a bit of the sweetness. It's also going to have the chocolate into it. But like all the... Well, that smells very chocolatey. I know, it's great. It's, mm. it's made with chocolate. It's just a beautiful spirit. Um, mm -hmm. But not all love is sweet. It's sometimes bitter. Oh. Right, oh. so... I'd be honest. <laughs> the drama. <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally like chocolate beverages, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah. But you know, I'm very honest in my, in my you know... I know, and you're allowed to be. Yeah. Uh, but this is what's going to help with using uh, the bitterness of Verna, which is an Amaro coming from Italy, is it's going to uh, even out those sweet tones in there. Okay. Which is really nice. So we're going to add a half an ounce of that into our shaker, okay. and then we do need to bring the chocolate tones back to life. So, mm -hmm. I only want the best for you, and I've got Kerrygold Irish Cream Liqueur that has a hint of chocolate already in it. Okay, can I tell you, looking at it from the back, I thought it was a bottle of Dark Alizé, okay? <laughs> I was like, what in the Alizé? Girl, it is 2020, we don't do that no more. And then we got your chocolate Alizé. I was to say, yeah, I was a hair for it, girl. I mean, I <laughs> I drink a lot of it. Too. I still say. drink hypnotic. This so, side? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Hypnotic and Hennessy is so good. Oh, it's incredible. It's Hulk. Nickel, the Incredible Hulk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next time on the Monet show. Oh my God. <laughs> Can we please? I love the Incredible Hulk. Your wish is my command. Oh, okay? Banji as hell, girl. My yeah. Incredible Hulk. I'm in the club. Uh, I definitely styled <laughs> a few of those on their photo shoot for the last, <laughs> last time they did it. Everyone's like, oh, you actually like the stuff. I was like, yes, I actually like Oh, I drink love this. Um, uh, uh, love hypnotic it, right? and all that shit. Um, so, me too. But we're going to talk about the chocolate martini <laughs> right now. Um, but we have all the ingredients in there. And this is a really great liqueur because it has the best dairy, honestly, the best dairy in all of Ireland. So it's okay. going to be real delicious. Um, your favorite part, right? Yes, the shaking and the stirring the and the things. Well, the ice. Well, the ice. Oh, yeah. That mm. too. That's <laughs> Not your favorite part. <laughs> Times have changed. It's 2020. The girls progressed. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to shake this up. Um, and the nice thing about a chocolate martini is it's going to get nice and frothy. Yes. So, are we ready? We remember yes, ma'am. Put, put, put uh -huh. the lip top on. And then. Seal it lightly. Turn it over. Give it one more seal. Five, six, six five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. Level up. 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 Yes! 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 <laughs> <laughs> You can do this one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was the original choreo, y'all, okay? Sierra could never. Sierra, I was like, Sierra, you can make a drink while you do this. And she's like, now with all these backup dancers, girl, no. No. All right, this is nice and uh, shaken up. Okay. And we're going to take our strainer over here. Yes, ma'am. That's for you. And we're going straight into these beautiful coops that we have here. <laughs> Every time. Okay. Also, also keep going. There we go. Yes. Ooh. Look at the chocolate, chocolate. Yes. yes All girl. up in there. But this isn't done. Imagine being a bartender and have to wash these things every time. That is so annoying. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. painstaking. Yeah, when people order shit like that, it's like, girl, you get a vodka soda. Okay. <laughs> like, that's too much. If you ever read an article where bartenders say, like, we want you to order like really fancy drinks and stuff like that's BS. When you order a vodka soda, I'm like, Thank yes, you. right? Yeah, it's it's a nice reprise from everything that's happening. Yeah. Plus, it's an easy cash exchange, and I don't have to work hard. <laughs> Smarter, not harder. Right? Absolutely. Ooh, a little fresh chocolate. Yeah. On so fresh chocolate yes. on top because like we need to do. Oh, y'all are gay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ooh, it's chocolate. <laughs> Um, and just because, again, so like chocolate's an aphrodisiac, I think booze is obviously an aphrodisiac. Yeah. Um, but because we had strawberries before, um, I think we just Why added not? a little strawberry on there. So I've already added a little slits onto it. Yeah. Just because it's fun to dip it into your drink. Mm hmm. And then, uh, and then you cheers. So to you. Cheers. My Valentine. My year. Valentine's. I love Happy it. Valentine's Day, Happy babe. Valentine's Day. Mwah. Mwah. And cheers to y'all. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Okay, that's really good. Now, 
it's, it's really good. It mm-hmm. tastes really good. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm going to fuck with you. She likes the tart drinks, but we got to do something a little bit. No, no, it's really good. Make noise for Pam, y'all. Woo! Yeah! Okay, I hear we got a lot of questions because mm. y'all need some help, clearly. So let's get right into our super special live edition of Love Monet. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. Woo, 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 woo! But today, since it's Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. we're going. Oh my God. <laughs> Prove that picture. <laughs> what? Oh no, we're gonna have to slap a face tune on her, girl. <laughs> we're gonna get your live in studio questions about love and sex. Because you know it's Valentine's Day. We all have questions. Mm-hmm. We all want to have a successful Valentine's Day, whatever that means to you. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I can think of myself. Success. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I'm the one to ask because I'm single as fuck, but I still think I, I give good advice. Yeah, absolutely. And you. As a bartender, like most of our job is not just to get you a drink, but to get you laid. Oh, this so, is true. Um, so we yeah. have actually a lot of great advice. I watch so many first dates, yeah. um, and I know a few things that you probably don't know. Okay, yeah. I think so too. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Our first question, my dear. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi guys, my name's Brianna. Brianna, everyone say hi, Brianna. Hi, Brianna. It's like a fucking AA meeting in here. I love it. <laughs> and where are you from, Brianna? I'm from Queens, New York. Queens. Ooh. 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 That's a very far away place. Okay, good. Yes. What's your question, boo? Okay, so I have three potential Valentine's options. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice, girl. <laughs> They've all brought it up, and I don't know who to choose. I was hoping you could help me out. <laughs> okay, three potential. We have a three. That's nice. Three's, well, you know, <laughs> three's, nice. three's company, girl. Yeah. All right, so. <laughs> I wish okay. I could go on all three, but. All right, you know. DJ, DJ Serrano, what do you think about that? Three Valentines. Uh, okay, so what do you like? I mean, there's got to be something that you like within each specific. Yeah, category. give us, give us guy number one. What, what do you like about him? His number one quality. He's got fun dates. Fun dates. We have okay. fun dates. Guy number two. What's his top quality? He's got money. Got money. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Okay. Case okay. closed. No. Okay. <laughs> guy number two. You're good. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> and guy number three. What's his quality? Um. We have He's shot. Do you already think about it? Yeah, yeah. But, um, we're done. Couldn't even so, think about it. Right, guy number one, guy number two. Okay. So guy number one, he does fun dates. Yeah. Guy number two has good money. Yeah. I'm gonna know what I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for guy number two because at the end of the day, good money can buy good sex. All right. <laughs> and that's the tea. Yeah. And you know what? And you can follow up the next day and be like, listen, I'm going out with like doing a girls' thing for Valentine's Day and tail number one. Let's do brunch the next day, like post Valentine's Day brunch. Oh my God. Two for so one deal. Smart. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> this is why every gay man should have a, a woman on his team. Okay. Because that's that's a great solution. Thank you. Number, like bring it all in. Valentine's Day night with number two okay. in the morning. Hey, babe, I was so tired last night. You want to do Valentine's Day brunch the next day? Oh Perfect. And Thank you so much. Fun. Yeah. Make so that. Fun. That's good. Pam, yeah, that's good advice. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right, ma'am. Miss ma'am in, in, the, in the cheetah scarf. Are you are you currently are you single or are you? Are you Married oh. years. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. No one's perfect, okay? <laughs> uh, married 30 years. Do you have any fun Valentine's Day plans with your with your with your spouse? Oh yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> 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 oh I am obsessed with that. Oh. We'll talk after the show. Okay, go. That's great. Okay, number three. What's your name? Where are you from, boo? Hi, I'm Yumia, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. From Brooklyn. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, what's your question, boo? So my question is, do you believe in finding love at the wrong time? Oh, Ooh. do you believe in finding love at the wrong time? You know, I do think that sometimes, like, the right guy comes along, but it is the wrong time for you. Like, whether maybe you might still be in school and you need to focus on that, or you just started a new job and you can't commit to staying up on the phone until 3 o'clock in the morning talking into you and being responsible for texting you the next mm-hmm. day because that's distracting from your other shit. So I do believe that love can come at the wrong time, but I think that the love that is right for you will find you when it's the time for yeah. it to find you. You know what I mean? I don't think life's ever really convenient. It's just that's true, just too. Life in general is not convenient, yeah. but it's up to you to shift things and to see what's happening in order to make space for what you feel is right, what's coming in, the energy that's coming in. Mm. So I mean, like... 2 a.m. at a bar, no, that's not the right, you know, that's not (laughs) the right time, necessarily. But I will say, (laughs) I will, I've seen a lot of you out there dancing, okay, (laughs) at my bars, but I will. I'm just dancing on my own. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, thank you. That was a great joke, thank you. What about you, David? Do you think love comes at the wrong time? 
Oh, it's come for me at many times. Um, that was the wrong time. But, you know, eventually it finds you. But I went through a lot. Yeah. My husband's probably going to watch us. So. Not that many, but yeah. <laughs> a, a, a couple. <laughs> like a few. <laughs> but you just keep trucking. Yeah, just keep on trucking. It will, it will. And you're a beautiful young lady. Thank you. You're going to get your love, honey. Thank you. Yeah, love the jacket. Thank you. <laughs> See, there's love already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what's your name, baby, and what's you from, where are you from? Hey, guys, my name is Kira, and I'm from Maryland in a small town called Elkton. Elkton, Hi. Maryland. Elkton, Maryland. Elkton, Elkton, uh-huh. <laughs> You're from Brooklyn, Maryland. Okay. <laughs> and what's your question? My question is, do you believe in love at first sight? Oh, I don't believe in love. I believe in lust at first sight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I believe in seeing a man and be like, oh my God, I am literally undressing you with my eyes. And what I'm seeing, I'm liking. I believe in that. But I don't feel, I don't feel like you can ever love someone until you know them. Like, yes, they're beautiful. You think they're hot. They, they say the right things, but... No, no, then they open their mouths. Then they open their mouths. And it's, it's all like, over. It's like, oh my God, get, uh, get away from me. You know what I mean? So I, I believe in lust. Not love at first sight. Do you remember that line in Clueless where she's like, it's just like a great Monet. Like from far away, he's like really great, but up close, it's like one big mess. It's like, that's so much of a <laughs> That was very targeted. <laughs> that felt very pointed, I'm just saying. Not you. Oh, uh. <laughs> Not please. Mm. Not never you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I know, I feel you. It's, I think it's hard because you can build this fictitious idea in your head, but it doesn't oh, totally. mean what you're constructing up here doesn't mean it's there in real life. So like all those apps when you're like, oh my God, this picture, I love I love this person. Like you're building that in your head. Just this is take true. a step back. This is true. Just undress it. Because, you know? then, <laughs> because then, because then you, 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 you find out more information from like, oh, they live at home. Oh, they don't do their own laundry. Oh, they don't have a job. Like it's like, oh my, it's like no, it's yeah, like. Yeah, there's like layers of, of like. Especially in social people. media now, we get so like you see social media presents to you the greatest hits of that person. You know what I mean? So you going through like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And then that's not what it is. So David, what what what, what do you think? Uh, with my husband, it didn't happen. It was the opposite of that. Like I thought he was cute, but like he had to like keep coming back and keep showing me like, oh wow, like he's really a good guy. He's, you know, he's a keeper. So it's the opposite. It was not love at first sight at all. David, say husband one more time. <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name? Where are you from? Boo? Hi, I'm Alexandria, and I'm actually from Oakland, California. Oakland. Uh, I like yeah. Oakland. Pass the name. Uh, Oakland, yes. <laughs> Oakland. We show a lot of love. What's your question, boo? What scares you the most about... Wait, I'm sorry. What scares you the most about getting to know someone you have feelings for? Oh, what? You go first. I think that's just, it's that peeling back that layer of vulnerability. No one likes to be vulnerable, right? I think that's such, that's so real. So when you get to know someone that you like, there's also a lot of disappointment that could happen. Again, if you construct these false ideas in your head, then you're just like, oh, like, like don't ever Google them. I'm just going to say this right Yeah, don't, don't Google, Google. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like a dark Oh, I've been, I've, I've gone, I've been the person that I bought the app for $1.99 and you put in their phone number, it gives you their whole genealogy, girl. <laughs> I'm like, so, oh, so in 1942, your grandma, you know what I'm saying? I'm like looking that deep. So I'm, guilt, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Yeah, don't, don't do that. But I, th I think that's the part. I think it's the vulnerability, and I think it's just uh, you don't want to be disappointed. So that's, yeah. it's hard to get close to people. Yeah. It's also exciting. There's it a lot is. of excitement that happens. It so is. for you. Yeah, I, I, I think that the variables of excitement and, again, what you, getting to know someone before you really get to know them, you have, like, coupling with this last question, you, like, built up in your head this fantasy, what you think that they're going to be to you and for you. And then as you get to know them, you did just like losing fucking lives like Mario characters, okay? <laughs> it's like, oh God, we have one life left, girl. <laughs> and it's just like, and they just don't meet the expectations and getting disappointed and beating yourself for investing and thinking that this person was the one and then they're not. And to start with the next guy, the next year, you know what I mean? It's just like, ah. It's just almost like you're almost on the edge of coming and it doesn't happen. <laughs> Blue ball. Ooh. Yeah. And then you gotta go home and take care of it yourself. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, baby, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, I'm Harmony. I'm from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh. BK in the house. BK all day. What's your question, my dear? So, I have this guy I'm kind of involved with. Okay. And he's always there for me when I really need it. However, even though he's there for the big things, there are these little things he doesn't do, like he won't text back, he won't ask to like go out to lunch. And my question is like, where do you draw the line of how many little things they gotta do? You know what I mean? Before you ditch them. 
Well, How much time we got? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I can write a thesis about this girl. Okay, my rule about that is it's like, if I am going the extra edge, if I am, if I'm making the effort to text you back immediately and text you in the morning and say, hey, just wanted to say good morning or whatever, like, if, if you're really invested in me, I feel like you're going to do the same thing. So if I'm feeling like, like that's not being reciprocated, it's time to go. Because again, I don't want to... Girl, we are, it's 2020, I'm gonna be 30 this year. I don't got time to be playing these little childhood games. Like, back in your 20s, that's when like you play the game of, I'm not gonna text back, I'm gonna wait. No, in your 30s, play the which game. we're trying to steal the deal, okay? We're trying to speed it up, we're on, the, the VCR is on fast forward, okay? <laughs> we're not waiting this whole thing. I'm gonna text him tomorrow, I'm gonna give him two days. Like, do not watch that Sex in the City shit and try to follow it, because Carrie Bradshaw is a fucking asshole, all right? <laughs> she is an asshole. <laughs> She's yeah, an she's asshole. so conceited. Oh, she's so conceited. She's narcissistic. She is an asshole. That is not a guide for your love life. If you really like someone, be honest, be upfront, be genuine, so that so that you're not playing a game and then be upset three months later when it all crashes and burns. Yeah. So um, after dating guy last year. Oh yeah, tell us the story. Girl. I hope I hope he's watching this. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, David, I hope you watch it. <laughs> oh no, I stopped dating David's a long time. Ago. Uh, <laughs> hey. But um, but I will say one thing is that if you don't communicate the things that you want, your expectations, you're never going to get what you want. And what we're so afraid of doing is saying what we want up front. Um, so I dated this, this one guy, and we crashed and burn at a dinner actually where I just said like you don't text me back at this time he's like well I don't do that I was like and I'm not gonna do that and I was like okay and then I found out he's still in love with his ex and I was like all these things unraveled but the part is that I'm telling you is <laughs> communicate because once you start telling them your set of expectations if that's not on their same playing field you can start compromising and learn how you can work with each other to build the best relationship that you possibly can so yes I love that I love that yeah. Yes, man, with the knowledge. Yes, girl. Yeah, I don't got time for that. We're not playing games anymore. We're trying to... But, like, honestly, in your 20s, live your life. Do what you want. <gasps> Make all the mistakes. Oh, all the mistakes, girl. <laughs> Make all the mistakes. I made no mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, baby, what's your name? Where are you from? Fierce hey. jacket, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, my name is Benny, and I'm from Seattle, but I live out on Long Island. Oh, everyone say, hey, Benny. <laughs> hey, Benny. I love... <laughs> not y'all saying it like me. I love that. <laughs> What's your question, boo? So I've been in a relationship for about two years, and things are going really well. I really, really like him. I love him. But we've both, over the past few months, gotten really busy. And I feel like I want to know what your advice is for reigniting the fire, if you know Ooh, what I mean. Okay. I feel like the sex has dried up, uh -huh. you know? And I just want to know what I can do to reignite the fire. OK, Benny, how old are you? 23. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is no reason why this sex should be dried up until you That's why I'm asking you. Okay, if you really, really like this person, like you love him, like you say, and you and you 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 know, you want to pursue more, I would say for different things. I mean, honestly, if y'all are in the back of an Uber, get it pop in the back of an Uber. Uh, listen, listen, if they're, if they're not recording you, there's no one, they don't fucking know. <laughs> You, you, if, if the driver is only seen from the shoulders up, you move your hand down, you explore that. Y'all go, y'all both go out to, to, to the Red Lobster like me on Valentine's Day, okay? You go, after the, after the check, don't leave your, your valuables at the table because people steal. After the, go, yeah, like you go cheddar. to the bathroom, you get to the bathroom, y'all have a little, a, a little session, a little moment in the, in the stall. Like, you gotta find fun ways. To, listen, you're in your 20s, you won't, you'll be fine. You are a white man in Long Island. You won't get arrested, okay? <laughs> You will, you will be just fine. Okay, what do you yeah. have to do? Right. You know what's funny? I had this conversation with my girlfriend at a bar two days ago. Uh -huh. Two days ago. And there was a fantastic study, you should look up these articles, where there was a challenge they put out to couples to have sex for an entire month, every single day in a month. And they recorded what happened from day one to like day 30 oh God. Uh, in, this, in the challenge. And it was incredible the connection that reignited with the couples. Really? They had to make time for it. Sometimes it was like an all day thing. And one time it was like five minutes. But the idea is making that time for each other and also giving each other room to say what you wanted in the bedroom yeah. and taking those turns. So have a challenge, you know? Yeah. And honestly, say to your partner and be like, we're gonna do this, because what it does is it brings a new level of connectivity to that relationship that you didn't have before, and then it re-sparks what it is that you love about each other, so. I love that. Go, do the challenge! Yeah, do that. <laughs> David, what do you think? It's funny that so you yeah, You've that. been married for, for five years now, yeah, right? five and a half years. Five that and a half you years. mentioned that, because I heard the same study, but it was a whole year. 365. I'm in. So, every day? Yeah. For every day. That's, no, that's yeah. too much. That's a I lot mean, of physicality. <laughs> But yeah. you know what? 30. No. When you're in a long-term relationship, like you're gonna have these like 
peaks and valleys. So yeah. it, don't get too stressed about it. Also, my last thing I will say is don't be afraid to verbalize things that you think that maybe a kink or fetish of yours that you that you are ashamed or afraid. If you if you all been together for two years, you can be honest. Be like, I want to try this thing. And however it's safe, great, create a safe space for you to say it. Maybe it's over dinner or via FaceTime, whatever, like whatever the safe space is, verbalize what it is that you want to try. Right, 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 mama? You, you, uh-huh, you gotta, you gotta try some things out, right? Uh-huh. Just give him the link to this episode. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Ah! Hey, girl! <laughs> Switch it up. Oh my God, those are great questions. They are really amazing questions. Uh, thank you guys. Really, really, really. We should do this more often. I, I know, like this. This is good. Everyone's love life. Oh, yeah, this was therapeutic for me. I'm about to go and conquer the world tonight. <laughs> I'm like, East. I think I was going to go to the bar down the street and see what happens. <laughs> Y'all, make noise for Pam. Thank you, Pam, for coming. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank thank Happy you so Valentine's much. Day. You to you too, my dear. Love you. Mm, and next up, we'll be getting some expert opinions from an expert on all things cannabis, Erica Pittman. Check it out. Hi, I'm Erica Pittman, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Viola. Ooh. There are all types of cannabis businesses and companies happening, and you're teaming up with Viola. Yes. And talk to, talk to me about Viola. Why is Viola dope? 100%. For lack of a better I mean, word, I mean, dope. No, no, Viola is dope, right? It's <laughs> the new dope. No, we won't do that. Uh, but Viola's amazing. I think one of the things that uh, really intrigued me about Viola as the sort of the brand that I chose to want to participate with is, is it's a purpose-driven brand. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Al Harrington. No, no. He's an I, NBA veteran. I Viola. can tell I'm very sporty. To each his own. I'm not the biggest sports fan at all, but I do know Al Harrington. Yeah. He started Viola in 2011 for a few reasons. Um, he uh, actually was afraid of cannabis uh, growing up and, you yeah. know, training and being a professional in the NBA. He shied away from it. He had some colleagues and friends that actually smoked cannabis and mm -hmm. performed. You know, yeah. they would, you know, perhaps engage and then the next day perform at peak performance. Yeah. And so he realized that some of the stigma that was associated with it perhaps may not be as accurate as we have been taught. Yeah. Um, and his grandmother, Viola. Uh -huh. uh, oh, so it's her, his grandmother. It's named after Viola. his grandmother. Oh, so uh, she suffered from glaucoma and diabetes. Uh -huh. And she really experienced a ton of pain in her eyes and she just couldn't find a solution. She took a ton of pain medication and Al somehow convinced her to try cannabis. The cannabis. His grandmother. His grandmother. Oh, and she my said, God. I'm could, not smoking no reefer. Right, my grandmother would never. Right. He, he always jokes. He's like, she called it reefer at the time. <laughs> he's like, why are you crazy? I'm not doing that. But he's like, look, grandma, I'm telling you, I think this can help you. You know, you're in a lot of pain. You know, we, we've tried everything. Let's try it. And the way he tells the story is about an hour and a half later, this woman was reading her Bible and what? crying because she hadn't been able to see her Bible. Oh, my God. Because of her cannabis Before, use. Yes. <laughs> It's not for recreational use in New York State right. yet, but we're working towards that. Yep. Yeah. We and are. do we think it's gonna? I, I mean, I don't see it happening in the next five years. You think so? Yes, it will. Really? In the next five years. But it's, it's, uh, yes. it's, it, it seems like we've been talking about it for so long, but it's just, well, just think, medical use now. Well, you know what it is. There's a so there's a legislation process that happens in, in, at the interstate level and at the federal level, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think when you when you look at how many states have come on board since Colorado this is true. made it recreational yeah. legally, it, it hasn't been that long. Yeah. You know, this it's is been. True. It, it, it's yeah. Been a, nine years, maybe mm -hmm. ten years. Yeah. Um, so I think that coupled with how many states are allowing medicinal use, right? Yeah. That's advancing. Even so, New Jersey, I'm like, I'm New like Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a whole category of consumers now that we're looking at target called Canna Curious. Canna okay, break that down for me. Canna Erica. Curious is a is a real target. That sounds like some like a, like some Tinder hashtag. Doesn't I'm it? Kinda curious. I'm Canna Curious. I'm Canna Curious, right? Girl. <laughs> So is that people who are curious about indulging in the cannabis? Absolutely. There is a there's huh. a psychographic of consumers that are um, hearing about cannabis. They have a fundamental understanding of CBD versus THC, which I think three years ago even people didn't really I know don't the understand. I don't understand the difference. THC gets you high. Yes. And CBD makes you feel good. It, it, CBD has the sort of, um, if you will, medicinal effect okay. on the body. So, so the all the medicine is in the, the CBD. Yes. There's a, a, a diverse group of people that are engaged in cannabis. And unfortunately, there's not a diverse group of people that are benefiting financially from it. Oh, well, let's talk about that because I'm sure 
the consumers, I mean, the people who are at the top responsible for producing cannabis largely yeah. don't look like don't look like the consumers, which I think, which is what Viola is trying to fight that whole stigma. Absolutely, we are trying to destigmatize yeah. the association with cannabis amongst African Americans. But bigger than that, we're trying to create opportunities, opportunities for economic wealth, uh, yeah. social impact, yeah. um, honestly, generational wealth. Um, yeah. When you think about the families and the individuals that have been affected by nonviolent crime and the war on drugs, generationally, people grew up. With their mothers and fathers mm -hmm. as a result of um, yeah people serving life sentences, life sentences, in jail sentences for cannabis for cannabis and now we have billion dollar companies um, it's crazy off of the same thing yeah often people understand that I have never this is the first time I'm ever in an industry where it's so new and so green no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> I would love to partner with um, uh, a, a cannabis company come out, come out with like a line, like a strain of my own, like, yes. you know, and like a little fun drag queen strain. We Maybe should definitely it, do it. Right, that would be so dope. It right? would be amazing. No pun again. <laughs> uh, Erica, thank you so much for stopping by thank and you. chatting with us about cannabis. I look forward to my little goodie bag of dope goodies. Well, you have to come to California. Oh, right, because you could state yeah. lines. Yeah, okay, we'll, 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 we'll show that off camera. <laughs> thank you so much, You're Erica. welcome. Thank you. is a total triple threat. This actor, singer, and dancer got his start playing young Simba in The Lion King on Broadway, and now you probably know him as Blank and Grownish. Make some noise for Trevor Jackson! Up, Trevor up. Jackson! Come on, man. What's good? Good, good, I'm chilling. I, I just, I'm loving the vibe. I love the shirt. What does your shirt say? Thank you, global warming. You know, <laughs> prayers, prayers. Honestly, though, no. it prayers was like it, yeah, Australia. it was like 70 degrees in New York City yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, let's pray for everybody that's struggling right now. Now I have to say, um, the dragon tail. Oh yeah! Thank you oh, for saying it. Oh right. yeah! It doesn't no rat tail. It's a dragon. Right, tail. Get, dragon. get into the dragon tail. Come on, guys! Get it, get it right. Get it right. We're rebranding. Re rebranding. Re rebranding. <laughs> what, what, what inspired the dragon tail? Uh, I love Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, uh, my favorite movies, probably not popular demand, but one, two, and three are my favorite Star Wars. One, two, movies. and three. And Anakin Skywalker's story, just of how he became Darth Vader, is just kind of you know. Well, you know, I feel like I missed the Star Wars boat. Like, I feel yeah. like I've missed a movie, and I like I just can't jump in. It's now one they... of those you gotta like take like a weekend, maybe like a week, you know, uh -huh. have some wine, sit back and watch the whole thing. You gotta really dive. I in. I feel it's like double dutch. It's like if you miss your turn, like, <laughs> it's, like over, it's, it's over, it's over. You can't get <laughs> into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he was just somebody who was felt it was at a frustrating time in my life when I was doing music and yeah. just anything, and I was just like, man, why why am I not? You know, and then, you know, you grow up, you learn good, bad, what it means to you, yeah. and things like that. Well, speaking of music, let me tell y'all something, okay? Um, I'm not trying to be nice, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, whatever. This mother effer can sing, okay? Oh it's God. not like, it's not like a singer. As we say in the black community, he's a sanger, okay? Uh, <laughs> now, are you are you a PK kid? Are, you, are, you, are, you, are your parents preachers? No, no. Really? Because you have that kind of voice. Oh, thanks. Like, you know what I mean? Because, um, you know, that's, that's when all the, all the good singers, their parents of the past, <laughs> this and that other. No, no, I, I did not grow up uh, singing in church, but... Um, and look, this is your... This is your the Dragon Tale. The Dragon Tale, oh, there it is. And is this your first album? This is my third, I think. Third album. Yeah, Rough third Shrap. album. But this is the second album of me doing what Trevor wants to do. You know, Dope. being able to I write my that. music, uh, direct my own videos, yeah, uh, and just talk about life and when it happens to you instead of crying about it. Write music about it. Write music along. about it. I love Man. that. And then, so how do you? How did you go from being? Because he was Simba on Broadway. Yeah. Then you did Disney. Yeah. And then now, and then, so what is your music about now? Like, what are you? What do you find yourself saying? Are, are you one of those people who sing about love, or you sing about? I sing about love. I sing about uh, some women that I've met throughout the course of my life. Uh -huh. uh, Good, you know, bad, ugly. Good, bad, and ugly. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, growing up doing that, and then after uh, doing American Crime and going to Burning Sands, it's just, I feel like my music and even the things I've done on screen have kind of been synonymous with my real life. Your real life. In terms of just growing up, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And finding out who you are and not being hard on myself. I found myself at one point just, and I'm like, yo, this is a part of it. There's no great story without any struggle or, yeah. you know, so. I started embracing those moments. Yeah, and as a kid, did, like, were you, did your parents make you go into Broadway, or like you naturally? No, wanted so to I started off tap dancing. That's the very first thing. Oh, so can do you still tap? I can tap a little bit. Oh, I yeah. can too. Yeah, I'll sing. No, yeah. not really. Oh, okay. I was high. I was high. <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> one of my favorite Broadway performances is Sutton Foster doing "Anything Goes" at the Tonys. Oh, it is one of the greatest tap numbers in the world. Wow. But I'm sure you're better. I'm just Thank saying. You. I gotta see it. Definitely no, not. No, no. Um, <laughs> 
But no, yeah, I started off, uh, this is the story my mom tells, obviously I don't remember this. She said I was like three years old flipping around and she was like, I want to take him so he doesn't hurt himself because yeah. he keeps trying to flip off the couch. I'm walking to, to like a tumbling class and I saw like through a door some people tapping and she said I just begged her for weeks. Like, give me those shoes, I need those shoes, I need those shoes. And yeah. that kind of started everything for me entertainment wise. I love Gregory Hines, I love Michael Jackson. And I saw those people on TV, so I'm like, I want to be on TV, I want to sing. I yeah. Dance, you know what I'm saying? Um, so those were kind of like. And did you live in New York when you were doing, obviously you had to live in New York. Well, no, I did the tour. So it's the, the exact tour. same show, but just we, did, we did the Pantages, so. we went to Hawaii and did shows. So, so I did. For three years, so I did 800 some shows. Damn. Yeah, from eight years old to 11 years old. And a then, life on the road as a kid, like I just, yeah. I don't imagine that being, yeah. I guess it is fun in some capacity. It is for me, because I'm ADHD, I think. I've never been diagnosed. Yeah. Just from my life history, <laughs> looking back at it now, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I need that, you know? Yeah. I need new things. I need to like get the juice out of life, like just always yeah. trying to experience something uh, something new, so. And that from, from, a, from a traveling Broadway show all the way to Grownish. How, yeah. Now, I'm very curious, how did you, like, I feel like you were probably like, oh, we need this, we need them on the show. They called you, they casted you. Well, no, it? so here's the thing. I did Burning Sands, which is a Netflix movie, and that took me to Sundance, and mm -hmm. that was my first time being at Sundance, and I saw Kenya there, and we were at some party, and he was like, yo, I need to talk to you about something. We gotta work, we gotta work, and you know, you hear that every day. You know, I'm like, right. man, you ain't. If I had a dollar for every time. Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, literally. Except for Bill. Bill, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so then he, um, yeah, so then he hit me up, and he was like, yo, come audition, and I auditioned with everybody, and then. I ended up getting it, and that was kind of, it was awesome. It was funny. He talked about the dragon tail. He wanted me to cut it. Uh -huh. I said no. They made fun of it in the show. <laughs> I feel like that was just retaliation. I, 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 I'm i like, that's dope that they let you keep it, because most yeah, people yeah. know, you got you to gotta get it. You were but like, if they no. say that, you say it's for religious purposes. Oh! So you're like, are you going to tell me that I can't have some, you know, and they get, oh, we can't, we can't, you know. Oh, my God. It's a trick. It's a trick. You, that, you this is, that's what I tell people about my hair. I yeah. want to change it, but it's a religious purposes, okay? <laughs> I want to, you know? And this season, what, what, what can we expect? To see, to see your character go um, Well, he is in his final year, so he'll be final graduating. Year. He has to really deal with adulthood, um, but he's still going very hard with his activism. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of topics we're talking about. Um, cultural appropriation, toxic masculinity. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm very excited for his his growth. And like, again, I said it's always kind of synonymous to my real life. Yeah. Like, just keep keep growing, keep evolving, and you got to face new new challenges. Right? Yeah. And also, you guys have I mean, you guys are winning awards. You, you guys nominated. Won, you know, nominated. 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 Let's hope. Let's hope. They're going to win. they win. You know, I come from a long line of uh, clairvoyants. You may know my great great grandmother, Miss Cleo. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I'm predicting that you guys are going to win. This, oh, you guys, the, N, the NAACP NWC, Image Award. Yep. And um, also for like outstanding comedy. Outstanding yeah. comedy series. Yeah. And then Hallie's nominated for best yeah. uh, comedy actress, yeah. and uh, I think Yara's nominated for best. Now, because this is our Valentine's Day show, can you what can you tell us about any on set uh, uh, romances? Or do, do the, I mean, because this is a very that is a very attractive cast. Okay, <laughs> I'll be signing up for everybody. DM. Right? <laughs> DM. Can, what, is it, are there any budding romances that happen on set? Yes, there's no, maybe abs so. Absolutely, all of the above. There's really. <laughs> I know it. Oh, I know it. I fucking know it. Who knows? Who knows who's having the kid? Do you know? Who uh -huh. knows to deal with that? It's just, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> now, speaking of singing, I do want to dive into your singing a little bit because you. I mean, can I say I've I watched like everything of you singing online. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, this is your um, Terrell Grice interview. So beautiful. Your voice is amazing. So smoky, so rich. So, we, so we're gonna play a little game called Lyrics of Love. Okay. 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 So here's what's going to happen. <coughs> I'm going to read lyrics to you, and, and you have to finish it off if you can guess what song it is. All right. All right? OK. And I'm not going to say I'm just going to read it, because I want to give it away, the melody. Because okay. you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm an innate singer. I feel like I'm going to give the melody. <laughs> I'm going to try not to, OK? <laughs> I'll make love to you like you want me to. And I hold you tight, baby. All through the night, I'll make love like you want me to. <laughs> Yes! Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the boy boys to man, y'all. Boys, boys to man. man. Classic. Okay. Hey, okay. Four or five is a vocalist, man. Them and Brian McKnight are my very, very Oh, favorite. Brian McKnight. Yeah. My very, very favorite. <laughs> Wait, what am I the... <laughs> Anyway, okay, we'll move on. <laughs> if I should stay, I would only be in your way, so I'll go, but I know. I'll think of you every step of the way. The way you did that very good, the way you read that. I, I know, I'm trying not to give it away. Say, can you say it one more time? Uh-huh. Oh, if I shit. should stay, I would only be in your way, so I'll go, but I know, I'll think of you every step of the way. 
Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. He's reading it good. I know exactly what it is. Oh. Okay. Whitney, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh. Hey, that, that was good. Was the beep was very aggressive. The that beep was, was very aggressive. The beep was very aggressive. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that, produce, that producer will be fired. Hey, but the okay. read. The read was good. I was confused. Okay. <laughs> Don't you know now, it's the perfect time. We Don't can make it. Don't you know now, it's the perfect time. We can make it right. Thank you for that. Mix <laughs> it up. Money's down. Uh, do you, OK, are you a fan of um, Tori Kelly? Yes. OK, oh. so you know, she has that viral thing that she, she did that, that crazy PYT riff. She does, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send it yeah, to you. Yeah, please, please. It is, yeah. first of all, her voice is amazing. She's and a she beast. does, she has a, <laughs> anyway, I can't do it anyway. Yeah, she's a, she's a beast. She's a beast. She's a, and but, that's why, like, you know, goes to show you, she was on American Idol, didn't work out, look at your life. I know, things. exactly. She's got to trust the plan. Yeah, OK, next one. <laughs> um, you don't have to say, in, wait, you don't have to say you love me. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have nothing to say you're mine. You don't have to say you're mine. <laughs> Honestly, I could even sing the melody for this if I had to do. You don't have to say, say it one more time? You don't have to say you love me. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have, you don't have to, to say you're mine. Adore You by Harry Styles. I don't even know how that song go. Sorry about that one. That's no shade, girl. No shade. You know he's British. That It's probably over there really popular. American <laughs> so much. <laughs> we need to turn the volume on that down. This is very shady. The, the stage is shady. Right, like, it's like, uh. <laughs> OK, one more, one more, one more. This is a good one. This is a classic. OK, OK. You're the type of woman, deserve good things, fistful of diamonds, handful of rings. Baby, you're a star. I just want to show you you are. You should let me love you. Let me be the one to give you everything you want and need. We got it. OK, let's well, go. Let me go. No. <laughs> OK, OK, we have to do one more, one more. I swear, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> Baby, baby, I'm dancing in the dark with you between my arms, barefoot on the grass, listening to our favorite song. When we you... were just kids when we fell in love. I'm supposed to finish that later. Uh, yeah. I skipped a few minutes. <laughs> uh, it. No, that's good. But Ed Sheeran. Yeah, Ed Sheeran, perfect love. Yes. I love okay, that song. okay, and I swear, I swear this is the last one. <laughs> this is the last one. This All is right. You know you're my Wonder Woman, Amazon, at your beck and call. Oh, that's me. Uh-huh. Out of my way, don't let me go, don't let me go, don't let me go out of my way, cause I might go out of my, out of my way, don't let me go, don't let me go, I might go out of my way. That's out of my way by Trevor Jackson! <laughs> oh, y'all, make something for Trevor Jackson for being here, y'all. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Be sure to catch Trevor in the new season of Grownish on Freeform Now. And before we go, I'm giving out our tip of the week. This week's tip <laughs> of the week goes to the person I've chosen to be my Valentine this year. And that honor position goes to Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> and that watermelon sugar of his. <laughs> Harry, will you be my Valentine? If yes, you can find me in my DM <laughs> at Monet <laughs> You can't make it up, y'all. <laughs> That's all for this week. Don't forget to join me on tour with the other Drag Race Queens on the International Work the World Tour and find us in a city or country near you. Tune in next time and remember to always keep your currency in check. Peace! <laughs>